Hey everyone, it's Jessica, Pretty Prints in Paper, and today I am finally doing a process video to explain how it is that I do alcohol inks on black. You've seen on my Instagram that I've been really into doing alcohol ink paintings, but on a black surface, and usually you see a lot of alcohol inks on white or maybe on some glass, but I love the way that the colors pop on black and it just creates a whole different dimension. So. I'll go over some of the supplies that you need to get started and do a time lapse and talk through my process as I create a piece. Uh, to prep your surface, I tend to use any kind of like surface covering to protect whatever I'm working on. I'm using a craft mat today because my canvas is small enough to fit onto it. I've also used paper bags that I've cut open and laid out on my floor. I've used a tarp, really anything that just protects your surface a little bit. And then the kinds of supplies that you will need to create something like this. This is just a regular black canvas. You can find this on a lot of different craft stores as well as this black canvas panel. And uh, I'm gonna be using a black canvas today from Arteza Official. They're an art supply store that you can order from online. And I have the link in my description for where you can find this product. And you can save a little bit by using my link. This is the starting black canvas, usually alcohol inks you use on a non-porous surface. So what I, what I mean by that is that it just, it doesn't soak anything up. So usually you'll see, you know, black synthetic paper. Uh, it's also a version of plastic paper from the company Yupo. And it's essentially just a, a thin sheet of what feels like plastic so that instead of soaking into the paper, it moves around on top, and that's kind of what you're looking for. And they have black versions as well. They only kind of come as big as maybe 12 by 12 from Nara Black. Uh, otherwise, I, what I've also done is take a canvas and paint over it with black acrylic and then seal it. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about as an optional thing for your supplies to prep your canvas. I used a primer called Kills Clear, and I'll link it down below, but it's a sealant, and you, I put that down first just to create a, another layer, and it's optional, like you don't have to do that. I haven't had an issue going right onto canvas, but I figure that um, as I'm selling work, I want to add those layers just for ease and, and quality of the final piece. So Kills Clear, and I apply that with this foam brush just for an even coating across. And then I am kind of ready to add paint to it. The different kinds of inks that I use range from a bunch of different brands, but I'm going to be using the ones in the frame right now. I use a lot of Bria Reese. It's really, really easy to use and pretty easily accessible at a Michaels. And it comes in a lot of beautiful jewel tone colors, which are my favorite. I'm also using a lot of Ranger inks. They have a huge line of a variety of different colors, and I have a whole bin of them over to the side outside of view. And then I also use like Copic alcohol ink. They have refills. And the same thing with like Blick. They also have marker ink refills that you can find. So I've been experimenting with these. They all behave a little bit differently and you have to kind of test it out yourself and do a study. That's what I'm going to be planning on doing soon is to be using some of the Yupo paper and combining the different colors, looking at some are warm, some are cool, and trying to see which ones go well together. Just because they're in the same family doesn't mean that they'll automatically look good together on paper. For this, I'm going to be using some of the uh, extender. So that's different than what other alcohol ink artists use, which is isopropyl alcohol. Because it was not really around uh, very commonly at the time I was trying to learn this because of COVID, I started using a lot of the blending solutions that come with alcohol inks, and that behaves very differently than the isopropyl alcohol. And actually, I prefer it when I'm working especially on black. So I buy the kind of bigger bottles off of Amazon the for the from Pinata, which is from Jacquard. And then I also do the same thing with the white. When you're working with black, you need the white, otherwise it will not show up at all on your canvas. So I pick up 
some bottles of white as well, and then put them into smaller containers. This one is obviously very well loved, but I just ordered this off Amazon and I use a lot of it. So I just pour that right into there and then very painstakingly with this iPet, uh, I transfer some of the white ink into these empty Breer Reese bottles that you can also buy at Michael's. And then my favorite is the metallic. And there's two of them that I really love, but they're both from Jacquard uh, Pinata color. This is the brass color. And then I also really love the rich gold. They are the ones that spread the most easily. And you can also use the gold from Breer Reese but you can get really big, beautiful flakes of the color with the Pinata brand. And then I have tried to use silver before from Pinata, but it just does not behave the same way. It's much more heavy and it kind of blends in like it's part of the paint when you want it to stand out just a little bit. So what you're gonna need is something to move the ink around with. I personally like the control of using just a big straw and blowing the ink around myself. Other people use a hair dryer and they also use an air compressor. That's kind of outside of my budget right now. It's totally up to you. People sometimes use a heat tool, but I find that especially if you work on paper, it'll warp the paper. So trying to, you know, start off easy by using a straw is best. And I also kind of have a cloth on the side just to make sure that when my hot air condenses, I can tap it out and make sure it goes somewhere else. Lastly, an option for you to seal your work at the end is using two different varnishes. One is the Krylon Kamar varnish. This is one that's specially formulated that it doesn't reactivate the ink when you spray it on. So this is why this is the way to go. It seals it on there, it keeps it from yellowing, and it kind of locks that in. And then the other one that I also use is a UV re resistant clear coat. And that again is because I sell the work and I don't want the ink to ever yellow or have the varnish on it yellow. So this is what I also use on top. Again, that's optional. It's because I sell it and I want the, the artwork to last. But for your purpose, if you're just beginning, don't worry about it. Okay, with that, I think we're ready to get started. I'm gonna talk through my process as you see a sped up version of what it looks like to work on a piece. I start off by laying down some blending solution, adding white, and I start off with the yellow because I want that to be as clear as possible without any other colors muddying it up too much. So I put that down first and I choose colors that are gonna be okay with blending in with it a little bit so that includes some of the warm colors like orange and red uh, when you start off you want to underestimate the amount that you need so start by putting down some of the blending solution and then you add the white and then you add the color it spreads a lot faster than when you're working on white because you are adding that white alcohol ink and then the color it spreads a lot more as you start to blend the stuff in you're letting some of the warm colors bleed in with some of the existing warm colors. If you need to blend the colors a little bit more, I just add a little bit of that blending solution in between and gently let the ink run together. The more of the colored alcohol ink you add in, the more dark it gets versus the more pastel that you see because there's more white showing. And now I start to add in a little bit more of the cool colors. I work a little bit quickly on this because the more you wait, the harder it is to blend the colors and the existing inks together. So when I added that larger piece to the teal, I wanted to make sure that I acted a little bit quickly so that the teal doesn't look too different from the first addition to the second. I'm thinking about what colors do or don't really go together. I try to avoid having greens and reds together because if they ever bleed, they kind of look brown. And if they're too close together, it also, they're complementary colors, they look like Christmas. So I try to avoid having those together. I don't worry too much about it blending too much. You can see that it looked really, really segmented because it blends together when you add the gold. I 
I add a couple drops of gold and then add drops of the blending solution and start to blow it around. A little bit of gold goes a long way and I don't want it to take over the piece, so I start to add a lot more of the blending solution and really adding some pressure on the air so that it spreads out into finer, finer pieces rather than the big gold chunks. So I want some of that, but I don't want that to be the entirety of the piece. The way that the gold on top of some of these colors completely transforms the way the piece looks, and it turns out completely different and it's stunning which is why I love working with this medium. If you're using a straw, make sure you tap out some of the spit that's going to accumulate in the straw because otherwise it sits on top of the ink and that looks very different than the rest of the ink that's supposed to blend in with. And there you have a finished piece. And this is something you're gonna fall in love with. Let the ink dry for several hours before you start to seal it. And again, that's optional if you're just getting started and it's just for fun, um, just getting the hang of it. There are a lot of different techniques that I still have to explore. There's a lot of folks out there that will teach you their own methods as to how to use this medium. But I hope you got to enjoy and feel confident about getting started in doing this art. It's so much fun. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Otherwise, if you like, please subscribe, share, and otherwise I'll see you in my next video. Bye!